So a lot of people are interested in how you and I repaired our marriage and actually have such a, a good one now. Mm -hmm. And so I know we've told the story many times about, and I actually feel, sometimes I feel bad bringing this up, because, but you and I have talked about this. Mm -hmm. You know, when we hit rock it's bottom, okay. when you had your affair, um, and we know I can hear women all over the world with a collective, <gasps> you know, that sort of thing. <clears throat> But one of the things that I so appreciated and I think was responsible for perhaps, you know, 70% of our healing was that when that happened, you, you took responsibility. Yes, it meant you admitted, yes, I did it. You know, it shouldn't have been wrong and I was sorry. That's usually what it means to men. But you went even further and you um, took that responsibility every day and not one time Ever, no matter how long, how many weeks went by, you never said to me or made me feel like I should hurry up and get over it. Mm -hmm. Never did that. And um, because of that, I can remember um, finally just thinking, oh, my word, you know, he really he understands. He understands what he did to me. And immediately that brought up warm feelings towards you because I did love you. That, that was why I was hurt, because I loved you so much. And when I realized that you realized what you did, I felt protective. And then it was on our way to being healed. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing that. And I don't know what your feeling is about that time, but... <clears throat> well, I just know that um, I had this opportunity that I wasn't obligated to have. In fact, by all rights, you know, you had to do what you actually wanted to do, which was, you know, set me on fire, run me over, run me over again, <laughs> back out over me. And then right. when you got all done running me over, then you'd try setting me on fire again. You know, I, I mean, that was the, you know, that's, that's what I felt like you, you had the, you know, perfect right to Feel that way, and you know, you know. One guy said to me, "You, you taught her how to shoot a gun. You know what? You know what's wrong with you? You know." Like, right. you that know, was so. a good shot. <laughs> but um, but no, to to have that opportunity to show you that I really, really, truly, truly did love you. I really, truly wanted to, you know, fix it or make it right or something. I don't know how to put it other than reconcile, you know, mm -hmm. because the Lord's the one that, the reconciler. Right. So, <clears throat> so putting my trust in him and, and, and just, just not just daily, but during the day or every day or every chance that I had to show you that, um, I was here to, to, you know, for the duration. to make it right to yeah. duration. Okay, so, so you said you know sometimes you know people want it over at a certain time. Right. You know? Well, the, I had, I had no expectation of the time. In fact, in fact, if you want to nail down a time that you and I felt like we had gotten to the place where we were. You had forgiven me, and we had been, and we had been back, you know, on the other side of the fire. I would say that it took longer than you, because you, you said that it was, you know, you know, you said, wow, you know, it was, it was this much time, right? And, Didn't seem and, long to me. And to me, it was like, I. But like you said, I was, I was willing to do it, uh, however long it took, right. and it. And it, it it was it's still never ending. I mean, it, obviously, the the reason we have this great marriage now is because of the Lord, obviously. But but I'm talking about because I took not only the uh, lesson learned, but I took what the Lord said to um, to the husbands and said, you know, to love your wife more than yourself, that is part of our marriage now. That is part of me um, showing you that right. 
my love for you that I uh, I do it daily. Uh, I, I do it during the day, whatever. Whether I tell you I love you every day, right? And I always want to. And you did ki- Kiss you every day, yes. And you did, and you did that, and that was right. part of it. And when you talked about um, forgiveness, I think that's the other part um, that also propelled us to where we are now. Is when I said that I forgave you, because I know a lot of women will do that, but then they bring it up. And they bring it, especially any time there's a disagreement or whatever, mm-hmm. that sort of, you know, and then the whole thing is rehashed again. And I'm very confident, and I, I believe, you know, that you will agree with this, that I never did that. Once I said, I forgive you, it's in the past. It was truly in the past because we had disagreements mm-hmm. after that. Oh, yeah. And it was never, we has do. never, <laughs> we still do, um, but it was never brought up. We never, it's, and it's not that I was hiding anything, truly. It was in the past for me. I felt like, um, just like you talked about, we wake up and his mercies are new every day. It was it was in the past. I understood that, you know, you made a mistake and you understood it and I understood it and we're all done and let's move on. And, and it really was that way. I don't think you ever felt like it got thrown in your face again. So that would certainly be what I would share with people who are going um, through the struggle, right? You can't say, oh, I forgive you. And then... Every time you have an argument, it's like, well, okay, you didn't, you know, put the toilet paper, you didn't put the toilet seat down. And remember when you had that affair, it, it, it's not, never going to work. Mm-hmm. It's never going to work, right? And so right. I assume you uh, appreciated that. Mm-hmm. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it talk about freedom, right? We could oh, go yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to bring up is once we got healed... And so we started on our way to, you know, we thought, you had mentioned this before, yeah, that we thought we had a great marriage because I had forgiven you and we were moving before on. Before we walked into Calvary before Chapel. Before we walked into us. Calvary Chapel. And then, mm-hmm. you know, we got to know the Lord more and um, he was teaching us more things. And so one of the things that you always used to share with me, and, and I knew it anyway, was, um, and I think, I think it's all people want this, but men, you know, they want to be wanted. Mm-hmm. They, they want their wives to want them. And um, listen, we're all grown up here. Men, women, we operate differently. And, uh, you know, men want sex. They want it. They, But it's a real important part of who they are. And um, so the problem that we had, which we found out was very common with a lot of them, is that, you know, every time I touched you, Mm. Um, you used to joke. It's like that <laughs> set off the launch sequence. Yeah. It was like, hey, baby, <laughs> let's go have it. And... Um, and, so, and as far as women are concerned, it was like, oh, my word, you know, I got to go pick up the kids and then I got to go do this. And and so the natural um, response for a lot of women, I was like, I'm just not touching him because I know what that means. It's like yeah. next thing I know, he wants to jump in the sack. And so you ended up n- not getting the thing that you wanted. And really, you just wanted to be loved and you wanted to know that I wanted you. Mm-hmm. And so... I'm here to say I really appreciate it when we finally got to the point, and especially you, when you realized that it was okay for me to touch you mm-hmm. and hug you. And that didn't mean anything except that I loved you. And as soon as you started doing that, what happened? Then I started chasing you around, right? right? So, I mean, that that <clears throat> what an eye-opener, right, for right. people to get a hold of. So, for me... Um, the whole idea of that was that, you know, it's something I didn't bring up in my testimony, but uh, there was one thing I hadn't given up, and that was, you know, when we came back to Calvary Chapel, Belfast, uh, and when I asked the Lord to forgive me again and all that, when I got to that point, I realized there was one more thing that I hadn't, He, you know, he, <laughs> he pointed it right out very bluntly because I, you know, had hidden it or tried to, you know, it, it, I'm sure you, it was pretty obvious to you. Get to the verb, baby. <laughs> but, but, um, you know, I was still addicted to porn yeah. and that's a, that's a big thing with, um, men, you know, from an early age, you know, the world gets you to look at girly pictures and then sure. you're looking at this and then you're looking at that because men are very visual and yes. they never forget that yeah. you know the things and then anyways but but once I 
once I gave that to the Lord and I never have looked back on any of that cured of my porn addiction mm -hmm. but that what an eye opener it was to realize that what a damage I was doing to my marriage because <clears throat> all I taught my wife was that oh she's not sexy enough i have to go look at naked women right. or she's not you know this or that and, that and that the only way that i get excited is to go look at something else you know or something so once that was gone out of our marriage and and then i got to look at it from a different perspective is when i saw the the light of about okay the reason why i don't get the um emotional part of my wife that I long for is because I've I've been ruining it ruining it with you know the 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 porn stuff the the worldly right. view of what men are supposed right. to do and this and that whatever and it just is well the world had taught the world had taught you that women want this particular kind of thing. And, and I was there to tell you that that was a lie because right. there's no woman that wants right. that. So once I found out that all that crap was a lie, <laughs> and then I realized, well, <clears throat> what I really want is my wife to uh, show affection to me, which means she actually really does want me right which is what i really wanted in the first place is i wanted a wife that would love me and want me and need me and all, and of, all those of those things and once that porn addiction was out of the way i realized that look i want her to touch me and it doesn't mean sex right i want her to kiss me and it doesn't mean sex i want her to cuddle with me it doesn't mean sex when i got a hold of that Things really turned around as far as our intimacy. Intimacy, uh, uh, intimacy, because that's what it is. The right. intimacy of being able to touch each other, correct, in a loving way, and not entering For, into that stupid sex right. realm. Right. Yeah. But think about how close it is to how Jesus <laughs> Jesus treats us, right? Because he wants a relationship which means he wants us to want him mm -hmm. that's why it's a free it's a gift it's a free gift he doesn't force it down our throats or anything he wants us mm -hmm. to want him mm -hmm. and once you enter into that and you really want him then you the byproduct of that you know we talk about is fruit right and so we're doing all these things so you as a leader right you want those things so even though you have you own my body and i own yours and it wouldn't it be a very good leader. I think a lot of men do this, though. They demand this sort of thing. As soon as you relinquish that, it's like you have the right to claim it, but instead you just was like, nope, it's all right. And so you you took my my holding your hands and my hugs and my kisses and you you just left it at that. What happened, right, what was... What happened was... Right, I turned right around. I was like, well, wait a minute. How about, you know... We could we could do a little bit more than that. You're like, wow, I'm actually getting what I want without demanding it. And yeah. we've talked about it many times that if uh, more men got a hold of that, mm. um, they probably they would be very happy yeah. men. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot on women, and I've talked to a lot of women. And listen, you're working all day, you're taking care oh, of kids, yeah. the kids are throwing up so, on you, you're changing dirty, and then you it's like no. So obviously, the big one you just touched on is in the Bible, and it says you you are not to hold back the intimate part the, of, the, yeah, of your, the, your the relations yeah so you're yeah. not supposed to hold back your needs of your husband but you got to read the whole thing because it's not just that you know it's <clears throat> you know it's 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 knowing that yes your body is mine my body is yours and then so you get to the intimacy part and you and uh, and in the Bible it says you know to set a set a part a uh, time. It's great, <laughs> and I think the other thing that so we've gone from how did we you know fix this mess that we had? We got it. You got it back up on the rails, and then you know now we're moving along. We got to you know the the sex part because the three reasons everybody gets divorced is you know money, kids, and sex, right? So our kids were already all grown up, so there was that and. You know, money, we had adequate amount of money. So we got through that part. And then now 
you know, the part that it just keeps getting finer and finer was um, you and I've talked about it many times. And uh, when we went to the class um, and they asked the question <laughs> of me, because generally we went to speaking, the weekend remem- weekend we can to remember, remember right. and um, generally speaking, women are looking to be loved. You know, I want love and an affection and I want you to listen to me and talk to me and, you know, that sort of things, which is why scripture tells the husbands, love your wife more than you love yourself. Um, and what men are looking for, yes, you want to be loved, but you, you want to be respected. You're the head of the household. You you need that respect. You need to know that I respect you and um, because it, it's going to be a scary thing because you're responsible for everything, you know. Um And so when we went to that class and they asked me, they asked all of us, all of us women, so so what is the one thing that makes your husband feel respected? And we had been married for quite a few years at that point. And I can remember almost being in a panic because I thought, you know, I could guess what most people would consider respectful. But, um, you know, I was distraught that I really didn't know. And um, I was so happy when we got back together. I was like, I really don't know what I hope I'm doing it, you know. And and as it was, I I was. And some of those things that you had shared with me is, you know, the fact that I, you know, um, you know, I would come to you and ask you your opinion on things, whether it was scriptural or whatever. Um, And then I would also um, speak truth into you. I mean, you... um, you, some of your demons that you would fight would be you. You weren't sure if you were going to do something. And I was always right there. I was like, of course you can do that. You can do that. You're a smart man. Of course you, you're you able to do that. And so I remember you saying that, you know, you you felt respected with, with those things. So I think that's an important thing for people to remember that, you know, you're loving towards me. And I love that. And and um, I'm respectful towards you. Mm-hmm. It's two different things. So I think us getting to our... Um, <laughs> I would say the best marriage ever, <laughs> this side of heaven, would be, you know, once we got back to Calvary Chapel and when we, um, you know, um, started learning more about uh, what the Lord said about marriage and husband and wife and how one was supposed to do this and the other one was supposed to do that and then it, and if you, if you, if we both started doing our um, part of the oneness, we actually were coming, becoming more of one flesh once we started learning and reading of the biblical right. marriage. Absolutely, and, and, and you know, you know, we go to a class that they teach, you know, a vertical marriage. So, Obviously, the key to this wonderful marriage or this, you know, <laughs> this side of heaven, it was, you know, is that you have the Lord, you have the Lord at the head of the your marriage, you sure. know, and then, and then, of course, the husband is the head of the wife. But that's not an abusive thing. That's a... Huh. That's a great thing because I tell on you all the time. <laughs> so that yeah. works out for me. But And not only that, but it, it takes the responsibility off from... You Correct. puts it on me because I'm responsible for. That's right. Which I think uh, leads into the, I would say the last and, fi- you know, we still have arguments. We still oh, have course. disagreements. So we I wouldn't had, want anybody to think, just had you know, that, that we're sitting here going, oh, everything is just. We just pe- had one the other day. We just had, we had one the other day. day. But one. I think what we do, though, now compared to 30 years ago, is our damage control is quick. Right. It is quick. Something will happen. Mm-hmm. And then it's really, it's. Usually within yeah. a few minutes, if well, not a couple of hours, one of us, one either, of us will come and one say, "One of us either realizes that, that it was, you know, that sorry, we, I messed you know, up. I shouldn't I, have done I, that. I, I'm yeah, sorry. I shouldn't have said I that. I shouldn't have said it. And it, you know, and it, it comes down to something I'd like and to it, share it with every everybody listening is that, you know, I read it in a book, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of the book or the author at all, but the, but it was a wonderful way to um articulate what you know i would say a healing marriage right or a better marriage healing marriage so this guy uh described it as you know when you are chopping up vegetables and you cut your finger do you keep on cutting up the vegetables 
or do you take care of the bleeding before you bleed all over the vegetables? So you, yes, so you take care of the wound first, and then you continue to chop up vegetables. So, all right, so if you <clears throat> were, if I was to, like, say, the other day I might have said something wrong to my wife, and and she was either hurt by it or, th or thought I was being nasty or whatever it was. <clears throat> so that's like cutting her. But who am I actually cutting? Cutting myself because I want this marriage to be good. So I, so why would I continue to cut myself <laughs> when actually, you know, right. so... You so, need to yeah. fix that wound. So you need to stop cutting right. either each other or right. yourself. Because that's really right. what you're doing if, you, if you're hurting your wife in any whatever way it might be. Whether it's verbally this way, that right. way, or whatever it is. You're cutting yourself. Right. So are you going to you gonna fix that wound? Of course right. you're going to fix the one on yourself. Oh, then how about right. even more important to fix the wound Right. That and so caused. the other day, you came to give me good news, and I thought it should be better news. And so I snapped at you, mm. and I wasn't very kind. But um, what maybe, what and, and I'm sure you felt, and you were you were very gracious. You just allowed me to be mouthy. I could have been you, mad, and, and you, I could have yelled at you. And you just walked <laughs> off. And then maybe 15 minutes later, I, it wasn't very much time, mm. um, because I certainly was convicted. And then I came in, and I told you that I should not have done it and I was you sorry and I, very, and, a, and I asked you for forgiveness and so how did that make you feel? It made me feel really good in that um, you know and, and I was you it know, was done and over with done and, and over with right and, and then we were back you know and so I think that's the other thing that I would share is like we sort of bring it all the way up through and so yeah we're not perfect and we still do it but we take care of things we don't let it fester and so to me it was like well did i make the right decision did i right well maybe and i should have made a better decision because no, no. i play that stupid game yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time but don't you think mm. good job love you love you <laughs>